Not sure who. Maybe we start with Jim because he's delivering something in absentia. You can't have some of these things without Bob Janosko. <laughs> and uh, Bob couldn't be here today, much to his chagrin. Oh, yeah, there was a picture of him. Uh, that's where, that's uh, the Buccaneers or something like that. No, they're not Buccaneers. Are they Buccaneers in Tampa? Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, this is a 10 page dissertation by Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, it was not that bad. I do have to put my glasses on the board. Uh, by the way, when uh, Char was talking about that personality of Don, Mike, and Tom, you know, the, the emotion that came to my mind that everybody felt was fear. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> this is uh, from Bob, and it is very heartfelt because they were friends for a long time. It's entitled Remembering Tom. I wish I could be with you tonight and see old Baxter friends. I've asked Jim to read this tribute to Tom on my behalf. Tom Creel was one of the toughest guys I've known, and I had known Tom for 42 years. In fact, other than his brother Bill and sister Susie, I had known Tom longer than most. Ever since we both joined Baxter Healthcare in Chicago, we became friends and stayed friends. But Tom's toughness was more than just physical. He was also tough-minded. I witnessed his tough-mindedness as he rose through the ranks at Renal, from a sales rep to VP of sales. His tough-mindedness also made it possible for him to leave a great job at a great company and start his own business from scratch. He drove that Cadillac thousands of miles over the eastern U.S., signing up nephrologists to make their practices part of his company, Everest. Eventually, he sold his company to a large conglomerate, allowing him to retire and live the good life on Burt Key in Sarasota. And Tom's toughness was most obvious in the way he handled three years of grueling cancer treatment but continued to do the things he loved, fishing, shooting, playing golf. This was possible with the constant loving support from Shar and his family. Tom was also one of the most competitive guys I've known. Now, is that really true? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure many of his friends and family here can attest to that. We continually debated who had the toughest summer job in college. He worked on the coal boats on the Gulf, and I worked in a refinery in Cleveland. We tried to outdo each other with tales of our toughest jobs at our respective employers. Tom just hated to lose at anything. I know that only too well because I never beat him at golf in all the years we played. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> of course, I used to tell him, if I played as much as you do, it would be a different story. <laughs> and I convinced myself of that. He introduced me to fishing, sporting clay shooting, kayaking, although I never seemed to catch anything larger than he did. Again, a hard man to beat. Tom was also a man with strong opinions that were hard to change. Politics, sports, people. Once he made up his mind about anything, that was it. Years ago, he locked in on Miller Lite as his beer of choice. <laughs> now, he knew I wasn't a fan of Miller Lite. Whenever he and Char would come up to Tampa for a visit, he would bring his own 24-pack <laughs> fearing I wouldn't have it on hand. Now, 
even though Tom could consume a lot of Miller Lite, he couldn't drink 24 cans in a two-day visit. He could when he was younger, but not when he was younger. <laughs> So I currently have a large inventory of beers. <laughs> Anyone who comes for a visit should be aware of what beer they'll be served. <laughs> One of the most likable things about Tom was his self-deprecating sense of humor, a very endearing quality. And he was a loyal and generous friend. As the old adage goes, if you were in a foxhole, Tom would be the guy you'd want to be back to back with. Tom will be missed, but long and well remembered. That was from Bob. I'd like to add a few of my own words. I didn't prepare anything, but I do remember Tom, and there's a couple things I always remembered about him. His passion. He was very passionate about whatever he got in. His intensity. Did we say he was just a little intense from time to time? <laughs> and his work ethic. And the thing, to get along with Tom, all you had to be was as passionate and intense and as hardworking as he was. And then you were his friend. And he trusted you. I actually thought I'd lost Tom back when we were in the Sea of Cortez many years ago. And we, he and I were deep sea fishing. And uh, early in the day, when it was his turn to be in the chair, thank God, because I couldn't imagine this thing. We, we hooked into a, a black marlin. And for any of you who know anything about deep sea fishing, this thing was probably about a 1,000 pound fish. Now, I had done a lot of fishing in my life, and not a lot of saltwater fishing, though. And I'd often heard the tale about the smoking reel. And I always thought it was the typical fisherman's exaggeration. But Tom had the chair, he had the rod and the reel in his hands, and he was strapped down in the chair. And this fish took that line, and honest to God, it was going off so fast that the reel was literally smoking. And the crewman from the ship came over and was just throwing salt water on it as fast as he could to keep it from ruining the line. Unfortunately, we only had the fish on for uh, maybe 15 minutes. Uh, when he spit the hulk, it was gone. But it was the most beautiful thing dancing out there. But that's not when I thought I'd lost them. It got slow in the afternoon. The captain was taking a siesta down below, and we had this incredible sea of dolphins just playing with the, the boat. It must have been thousands of them everywhere. So Tom went out on the, they called it the Pope's nose, at the end of the boat. And of course, this was a Mexican vessel maintained by the Mexicans. I'm up there with the, uh, the first mate. We're on the, the fly deck, and the next thing we know, we look out, and there's no Tom. The bridge had fallen off under his weight, and down he went. Fortunately, the crewman uh, reacted very quickly, and he, he uh, put the boat in the neutral right away. Uh, and we're looking out in the back, where's Tom, where's Tom? We, we literally ran over him with the boat. And finally, about 150 yards off the stern, he finally pops back to the surface. So we, we get him in the boat, and of course, he's, his shin is cut to the bone, not from the propeller, but from all the barnacles on the ship, which are just super sharp. And so we get in there and we say, what are we going to do? I said, well, the good news is it's salt water, so it's probably pretty clean. <laughs> and the next thing I know, the, the first mate comes out and he rolls up his sleeve and he's showing us all these scars. 
and then he points to a can of WD-40. <laughs> <laughs> Tom and I look at each other and we say, well, nothing's going to live in WD-40. <laughs> so the guy, the guy sprayed this open wound all the way down to the bone with WD-40. I don't know if you guys have heard this. Thing. Anyway, so we said we better get in. Well, we're getting in and we, we hook on, I'm in the chair this time, fortunately, and we hooked into this blue marble, which went about 275 pounds. But we got him in, but it delayed us. So when we get back to the resort where we're staying at, and of course, Doug, this was a business trip. <laughs> <laughs> and the doctors we were with, They've been, they've been drinking their margaritas and tequilas for about two hours. And we get in there and I say, I need one of you guys to see what you can do for Tom, because he still has this big open wound. And the one doctor says, I'm drunk, I'm not going to touch him. And the other doctor says, and he was a little guy, I can't think of his name, that Don would know real well, he's from California. He said, I'll do it. Now, he'd been sitting in that same chair for two hours just drinking and drinking and drinking. And he stood up and all that alcohol moved in his system. And down he <laughs> So we decided we'd do it ourselves. <laughs> That's one of my favorite stories of Tom. And, uh, for me personally, it was a real loss. It was a real loss. He was a great guy. He and I talk about, we fought tooth and nail over the years, and we cared a lot for each other, and I miss him a lot. Thank you. Thank you.